Did you hear what Chase Elliott said after the race about uh, he's going to go back to Australia and tell his friends how bad we are? Do, do, how, how much truth do you think is in that statement? Well, I don't think that he'll go back and say that you know, the, 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 the drivers in NASCAR aren't good drivers. That's not that's not Shane's personality. But um, look, I'm no expert on uh, V8 supercars or the drivers, but um, I have a good friend, Paul Morris. TJ knows Paul. We, we've spent some time with him in the past, and we've <clears throat> obviously I, I know Marcus Ambrose and have, have – uh, had a great relationship with him when he was over here racing with us and could text them right now and, and ask them anything and get a response. And so um, through those connections, I've met a lot of other people in that industry. And to me, you know, V8 Supercar is the closest form of motorsports at the elite level, right? <laughs> When you think about um, <laughs> somebody at the front door, man, it's a golf cart guy. Come pick up the rental. Oh, I got you. Fascinating. Um, did, um, you, you know, you brought up Paul Morris. Paul Morris uh, was pretty vocal and opinionated afterwards on his own Instagram. I don't know if you caught that, but he was uh, opinionated about VA supercars, and he's like, you know, NASCAR drivers, I'm paraphrasing here. He did it way better than I did. But you know, NASCAR drivers can't come over here and just run V8 uh, supercars because they got to go through this, you know, ridiculous process just to be licensed or or else it's going to be unsafe. And he goes, huh, think about that. NASCAR yeah. drivers can't come over here. And that's like, man, man, it would be a good time to get Paul Morris, give him a mic and let him roll. I want to answer the question you asked, Mike, about um, Shane going back home and what his thoughts would be or – you know, just yeah. the whole vibe of that. I, I, um, so having known a lot of guys in V8 supercars for years, that, you know, V8 supercars is the closest thing in any form of motorsport that, uh, to NASCAR. So their car, especially with the next gen, and, and Steve O'Donnell said, look, the next gen was kind of based off of the V8 supercar. And when you look at the chassis and components and all that, it's all very, very similar. They run on a different tire, of course. Um, the, you know, there's a couple things that are unique, but honestly, if you're coming at, you know, what what is the most similar to NASCAR? I'd say it's V8 Supercar, and and so it's not surprising for any of those guys to get in our cars and adapt really quickly. Uh, but we also saw Marcus Ambrose come over here and adapt right away and be competitive right away, even on the ovals, and so. I know just how good the V8 supercar racers are. They um, they are so competitive with each other. They push each other to these un, un, you know unrealistic extremes. If you you know if you get a chance to catch you know some of the battles they have uh, they have in that series, you'll be impressed by you know not only the gentlemanship and and how clean they race each other, but also at the same time it's very aggressive and and they just really push each other to uh you know raise the you know they raise the bar and then take a look at bathurst the racetrack where they run uh the bathurst 1000 this is the most terrifying intimidating race course in the world there's no question about it me and tj drove, drove around in a rental car but you know that to them though is what they want they want that they want to be challenged to this sort of insane extreme. And there's a unique sort of mentality of uh, Australians and New Zealands to push themselves into these very uncomfortable, dangerous scenarios, right? Uh, in motorsports, they just, you know, they, they're, they're, they're very brave people, very proud people. Um, and so uh, their that mentality sort of works perfectly in racing and in motorsports, and so uh, his I think Shane commented that anybody in the top ten in V eight supercar could come over here and do what he did. I agree with that. I think you could put any of the top ten, the best top ten V eight supercar drivers in that ninety one car in that street course race and have the same result mm. because in that street course race. That was probably as level as the playing field would ever be for anybody coming into NASCAR. 
because our drivers had never ran on a street course. No team had ever ran a lap on this on this track. They had no data. And so that was as level as it will ever be. And so I don't know that Shane goes to Watkins Glen and has it that easy. I don't know that he goes to Sonoma and can, you know, outrun our boys uh, like he did at the Chicago Street Course Race. I'd love to see what would happen if we would take him and put him at one of the tracks that we go to every year where our guys have experience and data. and That'd be a little bit more difficult and more challenging, I believe. But, uh, you know, I don't mind them basking in the light a little bit and enjoying the success and enjoying the win and, and, and being proud of where they're from and proud of their discipline, proud, proud of V8 supercars. And Paul Morris is a great advocate for, you know, made a lot of great points and debated some of the decision-making and so forth in their own industry over the past. I've seen, you know, him debate some of the technical changes and advances in the sport in terms of paddle shifting and so forth. And, um, I, uh, you know, and I don't disagree with what he's saying about the license and the protocols in place that would make it difficult for a NASCAR driver to come run a race with them. You know, it was, yeah. it was irony and, and, and sarcasm in his, in his comments at how easy it was for Shane to come race with us and how maybe challenging it might be for a cup guy to go over there. And the unique thing is, is that the, the schedules actually work out, right? Cause they race when we're, our season's off, they're in the middle of their season, um, and so the schedule actually works in favor for us to have a lot of crossover. But, um, yeah, I, I'm also got to tip the cap to Justin Marks. Um, I don't know how he does it, but this guy has brought a lot of new innovation and thinking into our sport. Uh, he continues to, um, you know, they said they want to come in and disrupt things, but he does that in a positive way. You know, he shakes things up and cha he's changing sort of the culture and the mentality and the approach to being an owner and what an owner is and what an owner can do. And that Project 91 deal has paid paid off. You know, that, that, that Project 91 program that he developed that everybody thought, yeah, that's a cool idea. That's neat. We're going to see some, you know, we're going to see some unusual names in that car come to the racetrack and compete with us. Well, it finally paid off and, and accomplished his intentions by disrupting, you know, one of the biggest moments in, in our year. You know, this was a massive moment for NASCAR and his progress, you know, his car goes out there with a, with a, a inter, you know, international driver and wins the race. So, yeah, pretty, you pretty mentioned, listen, you mentioned how, the the equal playing field and how it was set up perfect for a VA supercar driver to come in because of the equal playing field and the first time that they've ever been on a road course. I would go so far as to say nobody's taking advantage of the parity of the sport and those moments of parity than Justin Marks and Trackhouse. You think about when he was on our show and he was saying, oh, when I saw that they were going to go to a new car, I said, I know this car. This is This is a car I know. And nobody else is going to know it like I do. And so this is the time for Trackhouse to go in there, get their charter, and, and go racing because of the parity. And they took advantage of the parity. Same thing happened this past weekend in Chicago. The parity, the equal, the unfamiliarity, whatever you want to call it in the sport, out of the ceiling tiles shot, drops Trackhouse, who goes in and steals the show. It was a, it, it was the, the perfect metaphor of over, of the overall big, um, success story that Trackhouse has had so far. Yeah, I agree. I've been so impressed by Trackhouse and and what Justin's been able to do and in a short period of time. I mean, that teams typically take years to develop and gel and improve and get to a certain level where they can compete. But they came in. I mean, it. I know that they bought Ganassi, and it's tip. It's technically that that very team that's been in this sport for for over you know for decades. But. Uh, the transition to the next gen and and uh, all the things that he's done to sort of evolve that team into his own vision has been pretty remarkable. Hey, if you like that video, like and comment below, and don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another piece of Dirty Mo Media content.